Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Does your trim ever look like this? Mine does too occasionally, because on this job, I was using this crappy old saw that I have the stops set at exactly 45. So a quick tip for you guys, if you wanna make it so that your outside miters close up on almost every corner, you can actually cut all of your outside miters at 46 degrees, and that works pretty well. So it's a pretty easy fix to fix these and make them look good once they're painted up. If you're doing stain grade trim though, then you blew it and you should have figured out how to make those tight. But we are doing paint grade today. So what I like to use for trim, especially things like this is Dynapatch or Elmer's wood filler, something like that. The reason is these dry nice and strong. So I've seen some people they like to wipe caulking into an open joint and I don't like that because what happens is it shrinks. So you can always see the coved out little space from where the caulking has shrunk. All right, let's get on to fixing this. So you'll want a couple of putty knives. Size doesn't matter too much in this case. It's, you know, I've got a two inch and a six inch here. The two inches for putting the putty on, the six inches just for holding the material. Anyways, let's get a close up so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So you can easily do this up to an eighth, and I mean with enough coats, you can even do it with quarter inch gaps, which I don't know why you have quarter inch gaps in your trim. I'm, I'm not gonna ask anymore. But basically, it's pretty simple what we're doing here, is I've just scooped the putty off, and we're just gonna fill it, like so. And you're just kind of making sure that you're actually getting the stuff pressed into the gap. That's the most important part, is that it's actually getting filled in. And I'm living dangerously on the edge here. You should put some tape on the floor, especially when it comes time to sanding. But you know, I'm a bit of a cowboy here. I'm skilled with the putty knife, so I'm not gonna get it on the floor. But I'm just wiping it into here. And now, I'm just gonna oh, clean my blade so I don't get it on the floor. And now I'm just gonna wipe up like so. And I'm gonna go to the other side, wipe up like so. And that's now looking pretty full. But I'm gonna give it just a little more attention because it's almost good to actually leave a little bit extra on the outside. And here's why, is that little gap might shrink. And I don't want it to shrink because then I may as well have just cocked it. So I'm actually going lightly now, a little bit lighter and now I've got just a tiny bit of extra buildup on the edge here. And that stuff, I'm gonna come and sand off later and I'm gonna have a perfectly square corner. Let's do one more real quick. Okay, so this one's actually pretty wide at the bottom and it's been dented. Somebody probably slammed a broom into it. Okay, so again, it's the same thing. Just fill it up. Be careful not to get it on the floor, but you're not going to because you're going to be smart and tape it, not like me. And I'm just, by going like this, it forces it into that edge, and then that extra push right here is what really fills it in. So I'm going to just do it one more time, even though I think that was kind of good enough. There, I got it on the floor. Look what I did, you guys. Clean my knife off. Okay, so that last pass left it built up just a little bit more right here, and that's perfect. That's how I want it. Okay, now I'm not gonna touch it. So once those are dry, the next thing to do is sand them. And that Dynapatch dries really quickly. So does wood filler. That's one of the reasons I like those products is you can apply it and then within an hour it's usually sandable. So I like to use a piece of sandpaper and I fold it in a certain way. So first what I'm gonna do, this one's 220, which is not coarse enough. It's all I had in my van though. I would use like 150 for sanding wood fillers. But I like to fold it in half like so. And this is just to get a line to tear it on. So I've got it folded like so. The next thing is I'm gonna use something sharp like this to tear that edge. Okay, next is how I fold this. Now this seems a little bit trivial and kind of micromanaging, but it's actually important because, so what I do is I fold it like this, 
And then open it up and I fold this one in to that crease, fold that one over and fold that one over. And I was about to tell you why, but I needed to show you. The reason is now I've got four sides of this that I can use. So right now I've got this side and this side. When those get burned up, you open it up and you go like this. And so now I've got two more fresh sides. And the other reason is when I'm using a piece of sandpaper instead of a sanding block, I'm able to really put a little more pressure anywhere I need to. So if I've got kind of a hard edge, like I didn't wipe my filler off good enough, I can put a little more pressure with my fingers. And also the other thing you can do is wear away your fingertips and commit crimes. Okay, but really though, it is actually kind of important how you fold this up because if you fold it up like this, like that, you're gonna be wearing away these two sides just from the sandpaper wearing itself away. So it's pretty straightforward. Just sand it off gently. And what you wanna make sure of is that not only do you sand this part nice and flush, like so, but that you also make sure that you sand where you where your filler ends. So right around here, the filler is ending. And if you don't sand carefully this whole spot right here, you're gonna have a hard edge. You'll see it after you paint. So that's why I like to be able to use my fingers and actually put that extra bit of pressure. And it even helps, you know, I can get right down here without scratching the floor too. And the other side. Next, finally, you shouldn't be leaving edges this sharp. They're just gonna get chipped and blown out anyway. So a really quick pass like this gives it a very slightly eased edge that'll help it last longer. So that's how I like to fix it when my miters are a little bit open. Like I say, little caulk, a little paint makes a carpenter what he ain't. But in this case, it's spackle. And for those of you that are from the east coast of the US and you like to call joint compound spackle? No, this is spackle for filling little things. This is drywall mud, not spackle. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter and until the next video. And if you wanna help out the channel, you can do all those, you know, like, subscribe, YouTube-y things. So anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Till the next video.